Good morning, everyone. Okay, welcome uh, to the hands-on training. So let's get started. So I'm going to use 30 minutes around to talk about uh, using VASP at NERSC. I will start with uh, the basic intro and then how to run VASP jobs, and then some best practice tips, and then running VASP with the variable time job script, and then summarize the talk. So um, we provide pre-compiled VASP binary, but you need to confirm your uh, VASP license. So I want to point out the email address uh, of VASP developers now changed. So please make sure you use this email address, otherwise they will not reply. Uh, so we use a Unix group, file group to control the access to VASP. So if you use your own build, then yeah, you don't have to confirm. So we provide uh, uh, multiple VASP modules and both for pure MPI uh, code and also the hybrid code. And then we use modules to um, you know, install, uh, con I mean, to manage those VASP modules. So we have, uh, you can take a look uh, I have shared the slides in the Google Calendar. So in the Google Invite, you can see the slides. So later you can uh, take a look at the, this more detailed information. I want to just let you know that we provide make files for the users who want to compile uh, VASP by themselves. So now talk about how to run VASP. So we have two different processors on uh, Cori. So one KNL and the other one is Haswell. And the Cori KNL partition is much larger than you see the node counts are much larger. Uh, one thing you need to uh, realize is the memory available for user application is not exactly the the number of node, the num I mean the memory available on the node. So on has on KNL only 87 gigabyte out of 96 gigabyte available to your application. And for Haswell, we have 118 gigabyte. Um, to operate on scalar registers, we have scalar instructions. If we look at the operands, typically. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, we needed to use the same terminology throughout the talk. So I included uh, compute node illustration for KNL. So we say Cori KNL has a, a one socket and 68 cores and 270 CPUs. So this is a, we are using the same terminology as the SCAD MD who provide our batch system. So by core here on KNL, you can see this brown box. It has a four CPUs inside. So sometimes people use different, uh, I mean, use the words of like CPU for socket. So I'm just uh, trying to provide what is the definition for them. So when we say um, the, the CPU is the, is, I mean, one core of KNL contains four CPUs. So the CPU here is equivalent to hardware threads, logical cores, or hyper threads. So for optimal performance, we place one task or thread per core for VASP. So this is like every four CPUs, we place one task or one thread. So if you use, uh, if you place more than one task or thread on each core, then it, it's, we say you are using hyper-threading. But for VASP, um, the hyper-threading doesn't help much. So in most of the cases, we don't recommend uh, users to use hyper-threading. Okay, so this is the, uh, Q, the KNL Q policy. I didn't include the Haswell, so they are available in our website. I just want to mention the interactive and the flex QoS that you can use. So these are some notes for the uh, interactive and flex QoS. So for this one, interactive QoS, you can use up to 64 nodes. 
for four hours. It's great for instant testing. Uh, so uh, when you do want to do small testing or like quick testing, you can use this. This this works greatly um, for most of the users. And then the Flex QoS. This is for checkpoint restart capable jobs. And there are some requirements, so you have to put like minimum time to two hours and maximum time must be larger than two hours, etc. So it, it, you can use up to 256 KNL nodes for 48 hours. And the great thing about this is it has 75 charging discount. And then I want to point out if you use a regular QoS, if you use more than 124 KNL nodes, you can get 50% large job charging discount. So for in general, VASP users cannot reach this number as you know, VASP don't run, doesn't run at that scale. Uh, but if you manage some way to bundle some VASP jobs, you may be able to um, get this advantage. So I want to remind you that uh, there is a two job um, aging policy, which means um, only two jobs per QoS per user, they gain priority in the queue. So this could, you know, largely affect your throughput. So um, to run interactively, I just uh, want to give an example, like you use a celloc and request four nodes and then you request this, you can use up to four hours. Usually it returns compute node instantly. And then this is a sample JavaScript to run pure MPI VASP. So the one I want to emphasize here, this is, uh, I think many users are already familiar with this, but uh, we continuously see users have trouble to understand this minus C and and CPU bind, these options were used on the S run. So basically, um, for the performance, we will launch only one task per core. But on KNL, each core contains four CPUs. So that's why here, the, the number after minus C means how many CPUs are uh, allocated per task. So we use this option to evenly divide uh, the nodes available CPUs over the MPI task. This is uh, to get optimal performance. So use this CPU bind uh, option uh, to bind the, the MPI tasks to CPUs. So without this, in most of the time, the, the tasks can freely drift, in, drift around all the cores available, all the CPUs and cores available on the node. So it, it's not good for performance, so we use this and they use minus C to achieve um, the process and thread affinity. So these are some of the example, like how you take care of this S1 command line. So once you know uh, the single nodes example, then it's easily can do the simple math uh, to do this. So one thing I want to point out usually for you know, for some reason, we use 64 cores out of 68 available for KNL. So this is mainly because it's easier to do the math, math when you do this threading, when you run hybrid uh, VASP. And also there may have a performance implication for FFTW, which, which would work better with these binary numbers. So this uh, example, like for single node to run hybrid VASP. So again, we stick to the rule, like we launch only one thread per core. So in, in that case, so um, if we use like, if we run four MPI, uh, four threads per MPI task, then you would need four cores per MPI task. So the rest of the thing is the uh, the simple math. I hope it's a, I, I wrote like a detailed um, thing over there. So I hope it's uh, clear. We can read through this later. So today I arranged a lot of slides for, for the training. So I want to just skip and just quickly go through this. 
So I want to uh, remind you, like we have this JavaScript generator. Uh, you can go there and put your request, like how many tasks you want to run per node, and then how many threads you run, and then it will give you the nice like uh, JavaScript. So you can you can try this out if these things are uh, become like uh, you know confusing. You can try that. So you can, uh, uh, these are some useful command you, you, that you can use to work with a batch system. But here the SSH underscore job, this is a custom command uh, provided by our system, system admin. And you can use this to SSH to the head computer nodes of your running jobs. So uh, this, this could be very useful to monitor your running job. For example, you can go to the head node and then run the top command. So something like this would be uh, useful. So let's go to a best practice part. So here I didn't have time to go through the detailed performance test slides, but I just uh, trying. I'm just trying to pick up something. Um, uh, the best practice tips like in this section. So I want to remind you um, the, the first thing uh, we want to like get through the queue faster, right? Then these are the tips you can consider. So be aware that two job aging policy. So if you submit a lot of uh, VASP jobs and only two of them get aged and then eventually picked up by the batch system, uh, the rest of them will not age. So that will affect your, your throughput severely in a way because we VASP jobs usually run at a smaller scale. So the way to get around this is if you can, you can bundle job to get improved throughput. So there are multiple ways to do this. So something is uh, the simplest way is you just run uh, use multiple S runs in the JavaScript. So each job would become like larger in node counts. And then also you can use this job resizing to release the nodes once some of the jobs complete. complete. So this is one way. And the other one is we recently provided a, a, an NPI wrapper for VASP, which can bundle like many, many VASP jobs. Uh, but they are better to be better to run at a similar, similar time. Otherwise, you may idle nodes. So we, we will give example for both these two. So the good thing about if you can bundle up many VASP jobs to reach 124 nodes, then you can get a 50% larger job charging discount. And then uh, we recommend you run VASP jobs on now because more nodes are uh, available and uh, there is a shorter uh, queue backlog. And then the, the other one is use variable time JavaScripts. So this one is uh, the variable time JavaScript, which is the focus of today's talk. And uh, this one can automatically make use of the backfill opportunity on the, on the system. So if you use it with Flex QoS, then you can get 70% of the charging discount. So this is an example how you bundle uh, multiple VASP jobs with, the, with the S runs. So basically, let's say you have five jobs and each run with one KNL node, then you can uh, use this kind of script to bundle them. Basically, you do S run and then specify each of them use one node and then put it in the background so those S run can simultaneously invoke. So you, you use this can bundle jobs. So the downside is um, if some jobs completed earlier, uh, then they will stay idle until the, the slowest complete. And another issue you could run into is actually Slurm is not very good at handling the multiple S runs in a single job script. So you may run into like warnings and eventually errors like job step cannot create it uh, type of issue. So fortunately, if you use job resizing, actually you can avoid the, the wasting nodes and you can release those idle nodes 
as soon as the job completes. So these are, this is a sample JavaScript you can go through later. Basically what it does is uh, the same as the previous example, like five nodes and you run um, five VASP jobs simultaneously, but you wrap each S1 into this best script. And inside this best script is the original one, like you run VASP like this. This is a, and after that, you check if your job is the head node or last remaining node or not. If, no, if not, then you can release it. The command to release is as control update the job and then provide the job ID and then provide the node list. So use this command, you can release that node once your job is, is run, uh, is done. Uh, so you can modify this script for one for example, if your job use like 10 nodes each, then all you need is here. Then you get this, go through the node list, you provide every 10 nodes for this to the command line of this script. So you can modify according to your needs. So another one is uh, the, the running many VASP jobs simultaneously with a VASP wrapper. So this is an MPI wrapper for uh, we, we did only for the MPI, uh, pure MPI code so far. We can add more support to the hybrid one as well. So here you can uh, run like this. So basically, uh, there is an example run you can find in this, in this link. So you can run 512 one node bus results simultaneously, and uh, you can get uh, you know, a much improved throughput. But in that case, uh, the downside is single job failure will cause the whole job failure. So you can use uh, just to see if that's uh, suitable for you. So another thing is uh, we, you need to consider the, I mean, from the parallel efficiency consideration. So running VASP beyond the parallel scaling region is not recommended. So you may get limited performance benefit, even though it's not running into error. So at least it's charging inefficient. Uh, and then we, for small jobs, we, can see, we recommend use uh, shared QoS. So also I want to mention like one rank per atom is a good reference when choosing the number of processes to run. But this is just a reference, rough rest reference number, you need to do your own test. So usually we recommend the hybrid VASP on KNL uh, for the performance reason. So as long as your system is not that small, uh, you, you should see like a better performance with hybrid VASP on KNL. So we usually recommend that and usually four or eight threads per task is good. And usually we don't recommend hyper threads and consider use uh, 64 cores out of that. But the one downside of hybrid is this or uh, none, it, I mean, is other than one is not supported. So it may impose some performance implication. That's why you need to test uh, by yourself. So you get the better um, test uh, the settings. So the lastly, this is a process thread affinity control. So you always need to use we mentioned this earlier, CPU bind and minus C option uh, explicitly to achieve um, optimal process and thread affinity. So actually, this is actually the basis of the performance, we, we should say all the time. So need to use this explicitly. And then also I want to remind you, some users, they, they like to use uh, run VASP out of their global homes, which has really small quota and also it's not performant for parallel jobs. So um, I want to remind you, you'd better run, you know, a C scratch or CFS um, file system. And then for large jobs, we have, you need to use this SB cast to copy the binary into the memory first, and then S run from the memory that would uh, shorten the startup time. So these are the good performance um, tips. And then let's look at how we can 
use variable time JavaScript to run VASP. So what is a variable time JavaScript? Uh, so uh, variable time JavaScript uh, splits a long running job into multiple shorter chunks. So to make use of the backfill opportunity and it also automates the preempted job resubmission. So they are for jobs that can restart by themselves. So uh, in terms of implementation, it adds a few aspect directives and then best functions into your JavaScript. So the core of the automation uh, is tracking signal. Uh, this means like upon tracking signals, a certain accents can be triggered. So that's the whole, um, that's the core idea of this automation. So why, uh, why use variable time JavaScript? So it, uh, it provides improved queue turnaround and it enables jobs of any length. Maybe some users want to run like months long, that's even possible. Uh, and, uh, and the jobs, so, but the requirement is the jobs has to be able, have to be able to restart by themselves. Um, and this variable time jobs can run with any QoS, both on KNL and Haswell, but with Flex QoS, you can get a 75 charging discount. So Flex QoS is available on Poly KNL only. So I want to remind you variable time jobs are an important component in the CR roadmap at NERSC. So we have been working hard to get the, uh, to restore the cap CR capability at NERSC. So this is, uh, CR is integral to many future plans at NERSC. So I believe getting an early start on variable time jobs would be helpful uh, for you in the long run. So how this thing works? So um, let's assume you, you've been running VASP like this, using this very uh, regular QoS. This is a very typical um, VASP jobs. So because we offer Flex QoS with a large discount, you may want to make use, uh, make run it like this, use the right hand side of the script. But as a result, this is uh, because it requires the short uh, time minimum, which means your jobs, you know, have to complete in multiple steps, and then you have to do manual resubmission, which is uh, not convenient for you. But variable time JavaScript can automate that resubmission. So this is what a variable time JavaScript looks like. So it adds this some additional directives and then also add some bash functions over here. So, and then another thing is it put the S run into the background. So this wait command is required so that your job will not quit um, after sending S run into the background. So this is important. So next I will uh, go through the, um, the addition of the variable time JavaScript and line by line and explain what the, what they do. So here, let's explain, uh, let me explain what these aspects directives do. So the first option, this is a, a slum flag to add aspects flag to add comments about your job. Uh, but we use that to um, put the desired wall time and then check the remaining wall time. So this is something we used in the VTZ script. And then uh, this the time minimum we, we put there. This is shorter time minimum. Actually, you have a better chance to backfill, but uh, uh, in, in the case like VASP, you may, this time could be too short sometime, uh, but uh, this is to get better, um, uh, to get better backfill opportunity. But if your job need a longer time to generate a useful result, then this one should be larger. In that case, then the downside is you cannot use flex QoS. But this is the time you specify the minimum time for your job to run. And then this is uh, the signal flag is important for the uh, automation. So we list to request that send a signal USR1 to the batch shell 
uh, sig time seconds before the job hits the wall clock limit. So this is sig time, you can put like 900 seconds and something like that, but this time should match the checkpoint overhead of your job. So this directive that <coughs> job should be eligible for VQ. And this is the optional option. And uh, this is used to append the standard output errors of the requeued jobs to the same standard out and error files from the previous job, but it's optional. So let's look at the next component in the you know, in these red boxes. So the checkpoint underscore command is the checkpoint command. So in this case, we use um, CKPT underscore VASP is something we defined uh, inside you do whatever the actions you take so that your job can resume. So this is the command you should provide. If not, then it will not do anything. Uh, max time limit is the it's the max time for the recueled job. So default is 48 <laughs> for you. And then this end and the weight I explained, we, we need to put that into the background so that when the signal, the batch system send the signal, it doesn't hit the you know, S run command. So we instead we kill the weight command and then it triggered series of actions on there. And then this is a setup script, which defines a few best functions. We use those to automate the resubmission. And noticeably, we have this requeue job and the func trap. Um, this is the two core functions used in the automation. So let's go, let's look at in more detail what this requeue job and func trap does. So basically, requeue job is uh, the function traps the user defined signal. And upon receiving the signal, it executes a function called func trap. Func trap is defined below, and it contains the actions or commands to run to checkpoint your job. So here, the, the major command line is a trap. This is Linux command. And then upon receiving signal, it will run this command. These commands are contained in func trap. So first, you can see here, uh, it first run checkpoint uh, command and then recue the job and then update the job with the remaining wall time. So this is what's happened inside the variable time JavaScript. So this is how the automatic resubmission works. So you submit one variable time JavaScript and then that system will look for the backfill opportunity. And if it finds like some number like six hours, which is between the minimum we requested, two hour and then maximum 48, somewhere between these two, and fit the, the gap in the batch system, then it will start your, your job. And then upon, uh, in this example, let's say we use this kind of uh, sig time, 900 here. Uh, so the job runs until receive a signal 900 seconds before it hits the allocated time. And then upon receiving this signal, a series of actions will be taken. Those actions contained in the func trap. So it first execute the checkpoint command and recue the job and then update the time limit. And then this uh, step two to four repeats until uh, the job completes or the job will you know, run the, the desired amount of, of time. And then you just check the result. So to work with uh, a variable time JavaScript, uh, what you need to do is adjust this save time. So each bus job may require different checkpoint overhead. So you need to test and see what is the time of throughput for you. Uh, and then, so currently the sample JavaScript wait for the current ionic step to complete after the signal is sent. So we use the 15 minutes in the example, but this may not be enough for your job. So basically the way to work, figure out this sig time is, it should be uh, at maximum is the loop plus time for your bus jobs. 
So um, you need to figure out the sleep time. The other one is you look into VASP checkpoint function and then add or remove anything you need to uh, resume the next job. And then if you want to save some intermediate result, then you just do it. And the one note uh, here is uh, not all VASP jobs currently restartable. Uh, the atomic relaxation and MD jobs are the, are the perfect jobs for variable time jobs. But we are working towards getting an external CR tools called the MTCP to work with, with VASP. We have made a significant progress towards this and we hope by end of July, uh, we can provide the DMTCP that can checkpoint any VASP jobs. Um, that is our something we are working toward. So if you want to check your variable time jobs, then you, you run like a set command with a minus D option. Minus D option provides details of your job. And this is a sample output. So with minus D, you can see the detail of the, of the job execution. <laughs> Without a D, you just see the final step, so only one thing. But with minus D, it shows all the previous steps. So in the case of uh, the failure, so first you need to check the standard error file for execution detail. Uh, we try to make the variable time job execution detail goes to the standard error file, so you can check that. And if your job run into any error, to say, if your job failed before the allocated time limit, uh, then this is a signal will not get sent, then your job will not requeue. So this is often the common uh, cause that your job do not get requeued. And another thing is if SIG time is not long enough, uh, then the, your job may get killed while it's doing checkpoint command. In that case, ensure your job will not get requeued. So this is one example of a standard output error for variable time VASP jobs. So you can take a look here, you can see it's running CKPT underscore VASP command. And then you, it, it's, you see that it first run this restart count command. You can follow the, you know, this is great to see where they are. And then you can at the end until it has control update the time limit then we are done. So this is one step, and then job get resubmitted and wait for next round. So you can custom your variable time job script play according to your needs. So it's, it's available here, and then the only three core functions is required for you to work with. So basically you get the local copy and modify as your, as, I mean, according to your needs. And also, if you don't like that long BTZ script, then you can hide most of them. Something like setup script, you can source it in your shell startup file. And then some Slurm directives, you can put in the SBS directives, you can put these Slurm default files. So these, this is something we enabled recently. So you can put something that not changing often SBS office into something like account the mail type, and also if you want, you can put those um, uh, variable time jobs, additional directives inside. But be, be aware, like there are you know, pros and cons for doing that. Sometimes you may just forget what you put there, and the end you don't see in your job script, and you may get unexpected result. But uh, this is something you can consider. And then uh, there are efforts to make VTZ scripts more user friendly. And my colleague Steve has uh, provided the NERSC CR VASP module, which can uh, make the, which simplifies the variable time JavaScripts a lot. So you can try this. So these are the steps. These are example of the um, <laughs> script to use NERSC CR. So as a summary, so running VASP on KNL is highly recommended as it has a shorter backlog and more nodes uh, in comparison to Cori Hazra. So use variable time JavaScript to get improved queue turnaround 
and they use with Flex QoS to get a 75 charging discount and it enables long running jobs. So you can run, um, you know, like weeks long jobs with a single job script. Uh, and then you, you can bundle VASP jobs to get better throughput. Uh, there are two ways. You can do multiple S runs with the job resizing, or like you can use M VASP modules to bundle many similar VASP jobs. So, and when you choose the number of processes to run the VASP job, uh, take this one rank per atom as a reference. And then you still need to do your, do your own benchmarking to know the best uh, numbers. And then running hybrid, on K, hybrid VASP on KML is highly recommended. Uh, in most of the time, it's for optimal performance. So something like a HSE workload could perform much better on on KML, so usually we recommend four to eight open MP threads per entire task, and then use a 64 core out of 68. And then always use this dash dash CPU bind and minus C option uh, to evenly divide the nodes CPUs over the MPI tasks and bind the tasks to CPUs. And do not run VASP jobs from your global homes. So that's all, and uh, we the recommended readings. Uh, thank you for your attention. So if you had any questions, I can um, answer, or my colleagues is answering there. So we can answer later, but our hands-on can start right after this. Uh, I think maybe we can take a couple of questions um, before the hands-on. We can use two minutes, let's say. So any questions? Hi. Uh, can we run any VASP job on GPU? Uh, actually, VASP has open ACC port and uh, made available for us, but uh, we we haven't provided to um, any pre-compiled binaries on, on GPU, but it is available. Thank you. Uh, it, uh, so is there a timeline for moving to VASP 6? Uh, I suppose it's today, I think, but I suppose uh, uh, the beta testing hybrid VASP version should still be available, I think. But for accessing VASP 6, you need to confirm. I think those will be uh, available to the users who, you know, have the license for VASP 6. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, you mentioned that you we shouldn't run VASP from our home directory. Can you uh, comment a little bit more on it and how can we change the executable to the scratch directory or something like that? Yeah, so the global homes is designed for you to, like I think the best use is just to compile codes under there, but it's not a performant file system for parallel IO. So instead we recommend the users to use a scratch or like a community file system, which has much larger quota and also um, the parallel performance file systems. So, and you know, the home directory has only 40 gigabyte uh, quota, right? If you write VASP, you know, wave car, it could easily exceed your home usage <laughs> as well. Right? Oh, okay, but, but I'm running on the Scratch directory. It's just, it's just that my executable is in the home directory. Then that's no problem? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we can continue to answer questions in the Google Doc. Um, so let's move on to the hands-on. So here, so hands-on, we have a we arranged like one and a half hour, hour hands-on, uh, mainly for you to try out the variable time JavaScript and then the additional one hour if you want to stay, you can stay longer. 
So you can click this link to access the, the Google Doc. So you can keep posting questions. Um, and you can also talk over Zoom, definitely. And then for the, for the hands-on, we reserved 250 KNL nodes. So you can run like interactively, you can, you, you just provide this, but the reservation is under an intern account. So you need to use both to use the reserved nodes. And uh, there is a sample variable time JavaScript available here. You can just modify that and put that in your run directory and then do some test. So because now um, the nodes are reserved, so your jobs will start right away. So I think in this case, you can put a shorter uh, time minimum, like 15 minutes or, so you can use a smaller VASP jobs uh, to test. So it will start right away. So put a smaller time minimum and the time maximum there so you can experience the, you know, requeue and restart the whole process. Now that's all and let's get started with the hands-on.